welcome to Significant TV, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is Kahiga Tiaga, lead facilitator of The Item. Welcome. Thanks so Kahiga. much for having me on. I really oh, appreciate it. But this is so, so cool. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, you know, I'm delighted to have you on the show, and I know yes. that as soon as you open your mouth, folks are going to say, so Fran, <laughs> <laughs> Where is he from? So let's just address that. Just right, right, right off the bat. Curiosity, right. People will be kind of focusing on that sure, and trying sure. to Google you. Absolutely. So how did you make it to the United States? Where sure. were you born? Actually, I was born in the United States, mm -hmm. so don't call INS on me. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, so my parents were one of the first generation of uh, Africans who came over post-colonization uh, or post-independence. Mm -hmm. So uh, my father's from Cameroon, my mother was Kenyan, and uh, came to the United States, New York specifically, to, uh, to study. Mm -hmm. And so my brothers and I were born in New York, but uh, much like those who came over to study, they all, uh, most of them wanted to go back home to rebuild their mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. And so uh, through that, ended up living in uh, Kenya, in uh, Cameroon, mm -hmm. <laughs> in Ethiopia, and uh, lived in Europe for school as well before returning to the United States for grad school. So it's sort of an amalgam of all those, uh, all those cultures and continents. Which is wonderful because today business is so global. Very much so. And to have be an African American, I mean, truly emphasis on African yes, true. and American. That's right. That's right. Um, and have that global experience Absolutely. is a competitive advantage. It really has. Um, yeah. Even when I was interviewing for positions here, so I'm trained as a lawyer, as you know, mm -hmm. and started my career here in Philadelphia at one of the big firms. And at the time when they talked about international, it really meant a U.S. subsidiary that a U.S. company company that may have had a subsidiary abroad and the relationships in between the U.S. and the, the European subsidiary was considered international. Now it's genuinely so, where mm -hmm. um, businesses are obviously looking to the United States as parts of, uh, you know, to expand their businesses. But people like me who have had a lot of exposure outside, who understands how other economies work and cultures work, are looking to apply our skill sets abroad. So. As you know, I run a practice uh, downtown as well, and uh, part of that practice does cover a lot of international work. We do work in Sub-Saharan Africa, mm -hmm. but also have the, uh, the fortune of doing work in uh, Europe, um, in Central Asia, as mentioned, mm -hmm. and in, in the Far East as well. So pretty exciting, pretty wow. exciting. Yes. Wow. So in your training yes. as a lawyer, actually, let me go back. What made you decide to be trained as a lawyer? Right, so this is one of these. <laughs> The, the African cliches, quite frankly. Uh, okay. If you're an African of a certain age, you really were only made available three or four career choices. Wow. <laughs> so you're either a lawyer, a doctor, an accountant, or an engineer. Mm. So okay, my not young bad, <laughs> not <laughs> bad pickings. <laughs> I right. mean, considering what African Americans often had as the four choices, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> and so uh, my older brother's a dentist, I'm an attorney, and mm. my younger brother's an aeronautical engineer. So we, oh. if we had a fourth, I'm sure there would be an accountant, <laughs> but uh, that's mm -hmm. really it. Um, mm -hmm. But honestly, the other part of it is my parents worked for the United Nations, and uh, I was contemplating a career between going the diplomatic route and going the law route. Mm -hmm. And after sitting at home and having a, a conversation about what skill set would endure the longest, the law mm -hmm. was the one that uh, we decided on would, would be most useful over the course of my career, and it is certainly proven to be true. Mm -hmm. um, just the skill set that you gain as a lawyer is just tremendous and is applicable in a number of fields. So I'm, I'm delighted that I went down that road. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Which sort of leads me to my next question. <laughs> I mean, having studied as a lawyer, right. having had the international experience, sure. what was that significant moment that helped you decide, I want to be an entrepreneur? Right, so I think it was really walking into uh, a law firm every day and mm -hmm. seeing the names of men on the wall. And oh. realizing that. Uh, reality check, you're a man. That's right. Okay. Well, is it, is it that <laughs> this institution that I was walking into was just grown by people who put on their pants one leg at a time. And mm -hmm. I knew that um, I wanted to, I didn't necessarily have the clarity of business being an expression of self, mm -hmm. but I know that I wanted to create something. I knew that I wanted to create something. So honestly, after leaving the law, the first time around, I actually started off as a consultant working with uh, previous uh, clients that had worked at the firm. Um, but then uh, the economy crashed. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, and this is where having a law degree really helps because my father said, dust off the law degree and get to work, man. So that's exactly what I did in 2009. Mm -hmm. And through the entrepreneurial experience, what I really realized was that in spite of delivering the legal services, there was also a very strong social mission that was always articulated even from the start. And it was two things. The first was to make sure, this, so there's a wide gulf between sort of big firm clients and uh, and mainstream clients. Mm -hmm. And so uh, to educate a mainstream client about how they should be treated by a lawyer, what the pricing was and all that, and we felt that was part of our mission. Even if they didn't retain us, we wanted mm -hmm. to make sure that they understood how their matter should be approached. And the second part of it was to give, um, honestly, minority professionals an environment where they would be exposed to sophisticated work, be given a lot of responsibility early on with the ability to advance. And whether they stayed with us or go, went somewhere else, we knew that they had an excellent foundation and had the ability to fail in that environment without it having significant repercussions mm -hmm. as it might in another, in another environment. Mm -hmm. And I think we successfully have achieved that over time. Wow. Yeah. That, that is a very noble ambition and aspiration for a firm yep. and in doing so in helping others uh, law, f law lawyers as well as minority clients you've actually discovered sort of or, or reignited a passion of your own absolutely and and kind of created another enter uh, enter enterprise that's right so yeah. the common theme and we can get into this is really I found it um, in a moment of reflection a couple of months ago it's just about being dedicated to human development right just mm -hmm wanting people to be able to achieve their greatest potential in whatever in the environment they're in, whether it's as innocuous as how do I maximize this particular business opportunity or how do I develop my career. And so I suspect what you're referring to in that <laughs> is uh, my, you know, being the facilitator of the item and, and yes. growing that. And that came as a function of uh, our law practice. We mm -hmm over time had represented a number of technology companies that were run by African-American men and women, and African men and women, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. um, and as I began to notice in the late 2014 that the Philadelphia technology scene was really uh, gathering steam, I asked uh, the person who was doing business development for us at the time to look for places where we could leverage our skill set, having represented these companies over time. And honestly, she repeatedly brought back groups that had absolutely no diversity whatsoever. Wow. And of course, my um, perception or my direct interaction with the technology community had all been people who, were, who looked like me. And so I thought, especially Philadelphia being a majority minority city, if technology, if the technology sector is emerging, it needed to be as inclusive as possible, particularly because of us being a majority minority city. So that's really the impetus that led to the creation of, of the item. Some po folks may be wondering why was it named the item? Correct. So um, I'm going to say this just absolute divine inspiration. I'm going to give it no, seriously, directly <laughs> okay. to that. What I, okay. I, t I joke with my friends is I say, in ordinary circumstances, it would have been called something fairly radical. Okay. Uh, but oh. as I was, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but as I sat there, honestly, I realized that um, it needed to be as, um, as open and as welcoming to everybody involved because it's that mm -hmm. element of the human development. Yes. It wasn't as crystallized as before, you know, but mm -hmm. It was certainly an instinct that led me, and as I typed it out, it just came out. The item stands for the Inclusive Technology and Entrepreneurship Movement, mm. and wanted to ensure that everybody felt included in those conversations, because as represented with the information that was brought back, it clearly wasn't being represented inclusively. Mm. And so we wanted to make a point of saying, it's not for one group or another group, it's really for everybody to come in. and. Luckily, we've been able to make some headway in terms of um, defending that inclusive term and hoping mm -hmm. to do so more and more over time. Good. Mm -hmm. What does that look like when you say defending that inclusive term? Well, I say that specifically because people treat the word inclusive as though it's a code word for something else in spite of it really being inclusive. And it's mm -hmm. this, what I'm realizing, and it's probably another conversation, is that language is just so important these days, you know? Mm -hmm. And being able to, to defend what you really mean by that language is important. So when people say, well, what do you mean by inclusive? I said, exactly what it means. Everybody's truly invited. Mm -hmm. But it seems as though we have to sometimes defend that as being for other but it's not, it's really mm -hmm. truly means inclusive. Mm -hmm. 
So you started over a year ago. Correct. And you created a series of meetings That's on correct. a regular basis. That is correct. What does a typical item meeting look like? Who shows up? Sure. Um, how is it structured? Sure. So just to take a little bit of a step back, the, the item was really a brainchild of a, f a group of people mm -hmm. who realized this at the same time, it was almost like a common, <laughs> common consciousness moment, that we needed to do something very deliberate to make sure that as Philadelphia's technology scene ev developed, we, we, you know, everybody was, you know, was at the table. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of go a little bit down the road, it is always better to be at the table while the pie is being baked yes. the, rather than after it's been split and then saying, well, I need a piece of your pie <laughs> or a piece of your pie. So right. as Philadelphia's um, technology scene is emerging, we want to be at the table to make sure that we're influencing at its, uh, at its birth, so to speak. Mm -hmm. With re specific regard to the item, it started off as really an opportunity for people who were interested in technology or people who were um, already involved in technology but wanted to, to network with others to mm -hmm. find a comfortable environment to do so without really having any pretense of what sometimes Philadelphia gatherings often have. And so luckily with um, some of the friends, Taib Smith, who was mm -hmm. very, very gracious to host us at Pipeline, right. we had an environment that was very inclusive. We had an environment, you know, our first meeting was led off by John Gozier, who spoke, right. you know, and uh, reiterated his TED talk there. And from the very first meeting, the sense of this is a place where you can come and network safely and find resources, we was born. Mm -hmm. And from there, yes, we've had meetings every month. The third Tuesday of every month, we host it from 5 to 5.30 to 7.30, and um, we try to make sure that people get as much out of it as possible. Mm -hmm. So where can people find out about the item? Sure. So you can go to www.theitem.org. You can also go to our Meetup page, which is quite useful, www.meetup dot com backslash the item all one word and that will give you a sense of the kind of work that we're doing mm -hmm. and uh, what we've done in the past um, both uh, substantively and just in terms of the platform what do you see moving forward for the item as you go into year two sure so um, we were created February 17th of last year formally incorporated in May and we have broken our, our uh, responsibilities into three or four main areas. Mm -hmm. So the item now has evolved to the point where we're trying to solve part of Philadelphia's major problems, poverty and, um, uh, and unemployment, in, mm -hmm. especially in <laughs> certain communities. And so what we've done is we say, well, we can't just talk about it, we have to be about it. So we've created an educational program to train people. Mm -hmm. We've created a workforce development solution so that once people are trained, they can find positions. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't necessarily want to work for the man, so to speak, mm -hmm. we also have an entrepreneurial consulting firm to help mm -hmm. those who want to go down that, uh, down that path. And so, but what we found amongst all of those is that mentorship is one of the most important things that we have to do. And so as a result of that, and we're thinking about changing the M in item from movement to mentoring, ah, okay. to, to really promote Ask <coughs> Mentor, which is a platform that we've licensed from India to make sure that people A, understand the importance of mentoring, mm -hmm. figure out how to be mentored properly, and then to engage in mentoring relationships. And I think that's really important because most people are coming into technology without really any sense of what it is, you know, what the opportunities really are. And I find that people are being real, railroaded down one path or another because of marketing or because mm -hmm. of some aggressive sales. And what we're trying to do is make sure that people have somebody to bounce ideas off, to guide their careers in one way or another, and trying to accomplish that through platforms like Ask Mentor. Wow. Yes. The item. The item. We have about 30 seconds left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is your final word sure. that you'd like to share with our, our viewers? Yeah, absolutely. I, the item essentially is uh, there for the community. We have a long-term plan. We're not in a hurry. Uh, technology mm -hmm. is going to influence our future for a long time, and so we want to make sure that we build as solid a foundation as possible so that we can be useful to our constituency for the long term, whether it's people who are looking to be trained, people who are looking to be employed, people who are looking to grow businesses in, uh, in the tech sector. We're going to be there for them for the long haul. 
Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for Absolutely. joining us this morning. It was a real pleasure being here, Fran. Ah, thank you for thank inviting you. me. Absolutely. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Another significant story from a significant entrepreneur. Kiaga Tiaga, Kihiga Tiaga, excuse me, no lead facilitator and trained as a lawyer. And he is with The Item. And you can find them on the web at www.theitem.org. Join us as we continue to explore and discover significant entrepreneurs through Significant TV.